Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast. Today, our guest is Jenny Anderson from girlof10,000lakes.com. Uh, last year, we had her on to talk about her homemade wheelhouse, affectionately known as the Lil Hot Dish, Hot Dish, and she's back again with us. Jenny, thanks for coming back on our show here again with us today. Good to be back. Thanks for having me. When we talked to you last, you mentioned a young person in your life, little Harlan. You and yeah. your husband were about to embark on your first season with a little one. We wanted to have you back on the show here to talk about wheel housing with youngsters. How old was Harlan over this last winter and during your adventures here this year? He was about eight months old when we first started wheelhouse fishing with him. Uh, we actually took him on uh, just like portable fish house uh, fishing at seven months, but the wheelhouse was definitely more luxurious. No one can hear the baby crying. It's definitely the preferred method for ice fishing with a baby. <laughs> yeah, what was that experience like? Tell us about kind of what that that was like for you this year to, to go out on the water with him. It's actually a lot like camping with a baby. Um, so like earlier in the summer, we had done that with the little hot dish, we went camping. And then we took the little hot dish onto the ice and did the wheelhouse fishing. And it was, you know, it was challenging because obviously when you're fishing, just you and your significant other, it's your time is your own. You can focus on fishing 100% of the time, but literally your time gets cut in half probably, if not more. <laughs> you gotta balance watching the child and fishing at the same time but it is still fun to include him in on all the action. Um, I would say like the gear was most surprising for me. Just packing all of the baby gear is ridiculous. It's like you're moving. Every time you go ice fishing, it's like you're on the move. <laughs> so, I mean, my gear list was just like the usual stuff we have when we sleep with him. So, uh, the, the sound machine to um, dampen the sound of the rattle reels or anything like that. Um, the pack and play for sleeping. We brought a portable rocker at one point because we thought um, you, know, you can like strap them in, they, they'll like move. So it was just nice to like have them sleeping for nap time in that. And then of course, like all the food, breast milk. And then when he switched to solids, we brought some like food pouches, um, his winter gear. So like his bunting suit and his boots and all the layers, obviously you want to dress your kid up in layers because it's cold outside and then you want to take it all off when you're inside. So just the gear alone was pretty crazy on top of the ice fishing gear that you already bring. Yeah, tell us about kind of those differences. You kind of went over your gear list and, and what went into making sure that he was fine and, and he could do what he needs to do. But how was it different for you guys fishing, have, having the child with you compared to years past? Um, so in years past, we definitely did more, uh, jigging, but now we kind of resort to the, the rattle reels to do the job. And honestly, like, I know some people are going to say that you have more luck when you're actually working the fish, but for us, it seemed about the same between rattle, rattle reel fishing and jigging. So, um, fishing wise, it was pretty good. It was just like handling, the fish that comes in at 6 a.m. when the baby's sleeping, like how can you get that fish without making a lot of noise? It's like, you don't wanna wake up the baby, but you wanna get that fish. So like, it's literally doing everything in silence and like pulling out the fish as quietly as you can and then really quickly taking a photo and then deciding whether you wanna release it or not based on the size. And so it's just like sharing that excitement with your, you know, with my husband, but we're doing it like looking at each other in silence and cheering silently <laughs> it's a funny situation but I don't know it's I'm glad we did it we know what it's like to fish the baby now and I think it'll get easier now that he's getting older and shows like a little bit of interest in fishing yeah what were you kind of talked about trying to be quiet at six o'clock in the morning but what were some <laughs> of the other challenges that you faced um I think uh, one of the challenges was definitely keeping him entertained. Um, and for us, he was so young at the time. So just bringing, you know, bringing toys, bringing books, bringing new toys to keep him kind of busy. Um, and then 
also bringing a sled. We brought like a little, you know, those tiny sleds for babies to bring them outside, which was nice. You know, usually when we're fishing, we're kind of like stuck in the wheelhouse and with him having to like get some pressure once in a while and took him sledding, we got to step outside and do that. Um, yeah, definitely trying to entertain him, but it's fun to like, when we pull out a fish, like show him the fish because now he is not afraid of fish at all. He like literally can grab the fish. He wants to hug it and pet it. And like, he thinks it's like a stuffed animal or something. So I feel like getting him, you know, acquainted with fish early on was very helpful. Yeah, you're kind of keep leading into my next question. The next question was, <laughs> we just talked about challenges, but what were some of the things that you experienced this year that you didn't think that you wouldn't have experienced had you not had him out there with you? Um, yeah, I feel like without having him out there, we probably wouldn't have been able to fish at all. Um, I mean, just having um, grandparents watch him all the time is not an option. I just feel so bad. So like, it was either no fishing or we're gonna take him out with us and go fishing. So we chose to take him out. And obviously the ice fishing this year was not that great with the ice conditions. We only got to bring out the little hot dish like three times this year, which is crazy compared to years past when we went like every single year or every single weekend from you know January through March. But yeah, so I think just being able to go fishing was something that we were happy that we got to do. And then, I don't know, knowing that we can pull it off, I guess, like a lot of parents have come to me and asked, like, how did we do it? Like, what are the gear items that I bring? Um, they ask about what kind of food works best when you're trying to cook for your child in a, in a little uh, wheelhouse uh, camper. And so I feel like I'm learning as I go. I'm not an expert, but I'm happy to offer like what little tips that I have and just bouncing off of other ideas from people who have already done it with their kids. That's been helpful for me. So visiting with those people and kind of experiencing this last year, what would you do differently if we turn back the clock to November right now and you could, you could play through it again? Um, so as far as like bringing my kid fishing, well, like, are there things that maybe you wish you knew then what you know now as far as taking him out and maybe some secrets that you kind of learned along the way went, oh, yeah, this is, this is a good thing to have along or this is a good thing to do to, to uh, be able to enjoy this experience more? Yeah. Um, I, I feel like – so around the time that we took him ice fishing, he had pretty much just started – to sleep through the night. So it was kind of, the sleep thing was such a big thing for us. And um, originally I didn't bring a pack and play. I had just um, had him sleep next to me on one side of it. So our hot, our, uh, our little hot dish, it turns into um, a bed on two sides. So there's a small bed on one side, a small bed on the other. So Nick slept on one side and then Harlan and I slept on the other end. Harlan sleeping on the inside to keep him from obviously falling off the bed. But he's just not used to that setup. He's used to sleeping in a crib. So I feel like if I knew that just having a really similar setup to what I like had at home, I feel like we all probably would have been able to sleep a lot better. So I would have brought a pack and play from the beginning. You know, it looks just like a crib. It's pretty much like a crib. So fitting that in there, it's, it's big and bulky, but it's totally worth it if you can sleep soundly through the night, I think. Um, and then... I think I'd probably bring extra propane. Um, there's one time where we like almost ran out of propane and obviously like once you run out of heat, that's pretty much it, especially if you have a, a small child with you. So like bringing extra propane and maybe another extra one on top of it just in case is helpful. Um, and then just having the attitude of like, it's okay if you need to call it quits and go home. Like, you know, in my mind, I was always like, I need a whole weekend of ice fishing, like Friday through Sunday. I need it to be like this long thing for it to be a worthy ice fishing trip, but it's just not the reality anymore. It's like, I, I just need to readjust my expectations and realize, you know, whatever time I can get out there and whatever time I have to fish is worth it. And the fact that I can introduce my kid to it, you know, this early on that, that hopefully should make it worth it too. 
Awesome. I see you guys are out on the water right now doing some summer activities. So you're enjoying that. And I think you definitely should when you live in Minnesota, but what are some of your plans for this winter? Arlen's going to be older now. What are you thinking about as far as uh, your excursions for this winter? I'm hoping we'll have a lot better of ice conditions and we'll be on the Lax a lot more this year. Uh, I think we only got to go twice last year. So this last winter rather. Um, I'm hoping to take him to Lake of the Woods if we can, um, maybe to our, uh, the lake at the cabin um, in Wisconsin that we have. Um, and then just like, we love wheelhouse fishing obviously, but we also love like staying at different winter cabins. You know, people don't think to rent cabins in the winter. It's usually a summer activity. So a lot of the rates are a lot cheaper then. So we like to do that too. But just, you know, getting out there hopefully and fingers crossed for better ice. Perfect. What are some of your best tips for people wanting to get out on the ice with young kids? If I said you have to give me your two best, what are they? Um, number one, be prepared. Uh, you can be over-prepared if you want because uh, thankfully you have your car. It's not like camping where you can only bring your backpack and what's in there and you have to limit the amount of supplies. You can usually bring like pretty much whatever you want, if you can fit it into your car and your, and your wheelhouse. So um, just be prepared, bring, you know, the heater and all that stuff, backup propane, the, all the food that you could uh, possibly need, lots of snacks, you know, kids are entertained with snacks. Um, one fun idea that I saw was taking a plastic uh, tackle box and filling it with different snacks for kids to, you know, open and snack on. So that's like kind of a fun way to bring the tackle box in and then uh, check your um, check your carbon monoxide detector. Uh, that's always important before you go fishing anytime, but especially with your kids. So be prepared. And then my second advice would be just to have the mindset of uh, um, not not so high of expectations maybe, or just to have the mindset of that it's okay if your plans don't go as you want it to. You know, things are different and um, the fact that you can bring your kids along and have them experience this and have your whole family with you hopefully makes it worth it. And um, yeah, just, just have a good time with them. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming on the show. If people want to know more about you, see what you're up to, where can they find you? Uh, it's girl 10,000 lakes on Instagram, girl 10k lakes on Twitter, and then facebook.com slash girl of 10,000 lakes on Facebook. Awesome. Jenny oh, Anderson. I, sorry, I do have a blog. It's girl 10,000 lakes.com. I always forget <laughs> about that one. <laughs> I have a website too. <laughs> Jenny Anderson, thanks for your insight. Thanks for your information. Really appreciate having you on the show again and uh, enjoy the summer and uh, can't wait for this winter to come around again and everybody get back out on that hard water. Hopefully we can talk again in the winter. <laughs> For sure.